Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear students. Uh, now we will discuss a uh, uh, little bit about uh, an other infection caused by Clostrid uh, Corynebacterium pseudotuberculosis that is a uh, ulcerative uh, lymphangitis uh, in horses and cattle. So again, uh, this is a, a disease which is uh, caused by uh, this is a contagious disease that affect uh, horses and cattle and is caused by uh, bacterium pseudotuberculosis uh, uh, that this this uh, bacterium pseudotuberculosis is a different biotype that causes disease in horses and cattle as compared to the caseous lymphadenitis of sheep and goat so this uh, is biotype 2 that causes disease in this and the disease is characterized by uh, inflammation of the uh, lymphatics uh, of the uh, lower limb both in horses and in cattle uh, the Corynebacterium uh, pseudotuberculosis it causes the classical disease uh, which is a, a soil borne organism uh, that gain access to tissue through wounds or uh, through the insect bites. Uh, then uh, Clostid, uh, this Corynebacterium pseudotuberculosis uh, it possesses a cytotoxic uh, surface lipid coat uh, that uh, appears to facilitate intracellular survival of this pathogen and abscess formation. Uh, like uh, uh, we discussed uh, in caseous lymphadenitis of sheep and goat uh, that uh, Corynebacterium pseudotuberculosis it produces uh, uh, a phospholipase uh, exotoxin phospholipidase D uh, that increases the vascular permeability uh, of the capillaries of the vessels and it has inhibitory effect uh, on phagocytosis. Uh, prevents the phagocytosis by the host immune cells and also facilitate the spread of the infection in the host. So biotypes uh, associated with the ulcerative lymphangitis uh, in uh, cattle and in horses they are uh, different from those uh, biotypes associated with the caseous lymphadenitis uh, in sheep and goat. Uh, in addition to Crinibacterium pseudotuberculosis, uh, Streptococci, uh, Staphylococcal species, Rhodococcus equi, actually this is Rhodococcus equi is a cause of pneumonia in uh, foals, uh, then Pseudomonas aeruginosa. They have also been isolated from uh, the cases of uh, ulcerative lymphangitis in uh, equines and uh, in cattle. Uh, simply, <coughs> when we talk about pathogenesis, so infection of the skin wound is followed by invasion of uh, lymphatic vessels uh, and uh, then uh, there is a development of abscesses uh, along the course of these uh, lymphatic vessels. Uh, generalized uh, lymph node involvement uh, is unusual, rarely it happens in case of uh, uh, horses but uh, in case of uh, uh, cattle, uh, uh, generalized uh, li lymph nodes uh, may also be involved. Uh, then uh, you know uh, we already discussed that uh, uh, the organism it possesses a cytotoxin surface, uh, cytotoxic surface lipid coat that appears to facilitate the intracellular uh, survival of the organism and abscess formation and it produces a phospholipase exotoxin that increases the vascular permeability and has an inhibitory effect on phagocytes. So, uh, uh, this is just the pathogenesis uh, of uh, this uh, ulcerative lymphangitis. Uh, the clinical signs uh, when we talk about horse, so uh, initially uh, the clinical signs they appear as a wound infection. There is a wound infection and uh, you will just uh, see a swelling 
around the pastern and uh, animal will feel pain on palpation and when you walk the animal animal will show signs of lameness this is in case of uh, horses and uh, this may be unilateral or bilateral most of the times uh, uh, hind limbs they are uh, more more commonly involved the uh, as compared to the four four limbs this is perhaps to the more unsanitary or unhygienic conditions on the hind limbs compared to the four limbs uh, nodules uh, in the subcut tissue uh, they are present they grow and they are visible uh, initially around the fetlock and these nodules when they mature abscess mature these nodules they rupture uh, they rupture and uh, there is oozing out of creamy green pus discharge from these lesions. Uh, the ulcers uh, on the uh, limbs they have ragged tute putte se unke edges onge and they have a necrotic base uh, the lesions uh, they usually heal uh, in one to two weeks if properly hygienic conditions they are maintained uh, but fresh crops they may occur means that new lesions uh, they may develop uh, as these uh, then the persistence uh, this disease jo hai, it may persist for up to 12 months uh, and uh, lesions uh, in case of cattle they are also similar as in horses but uh, uh, it may also involve the lymph node enlargement uh, and lesions they may also be present above the uh, this hog joint ulcers uh, they also discharge gelatinous clear exudate from the lesions in case of cattle <coughs> here you can see you can see uh, there is inflammation a uh, swelling around the fetlock swelling around the fetlock and there is a, a formation of a nodule and when there is a mature maturation of this nodule it, it, it uh, creamy pus oozes out green greenish pus oozes out from these in this case you can see the lesions in case of cattle they are present then they are present above the hawk so the, the many times uh, such type of horses uh, they are presented uh, at uh, our hospitals or I have seen also in the field conditions uh, and uh, many times uh, we confuse uh, such type of lesions uh, with glanders uh, or other uh, diseases. Uh, diagnosis is based upon clinical findings in a laboratory you can uh, isolate and identify the organism from the uh, exudate that oozes out from the lesions. However, uh, uh, no serological tests uh, uh, they are available uh, uh, for the uh, for the diagnosis of uh, the ulcerative lymphangitis. Uh, differential diagnosis we need to differentiate this disease from glanders. Uh, glanders, uh, especially the skin form of glander that is called as farsi. So in equines, uh, glanders uh, also involve uh, the lymph nodes and uh, multiple sites, uh, lesions they are present on multiple sites of the body. Uh, then uh, again we need to differentiate uh, from epizootic lymphangitis uh, might be uh, unable to differentiate uh, clinically then we need to differentiate from a sporotrichosis. Uh, treatment uh, uh, firstly uh, the, if the lesions they are mature we need to drain the lesions surgically and uh, we can use procaine penicillin uh, most of the antibiotics they are susceptible to this uh, organism but uh, if we use parenteral antibiotics they may not be of uh, much uh, much uh, useful as compared to if we apply the uh, antibiotics locally they are much better than the uh, parental antibiotics and autogenous bacterium is an other option in early cases but the results of this autogenous bacterium or vaccine they are doubtful uh, and uh, when the case is chronic uh, the prognosis is guarded uh, uh, we can control ulcerative lymphangitis uh, through hygienic measures in the stable and uh, careful using of uh, 
disinfectants on the injuries particularly of the lower limbs means whenever there is injury on the lower limb we need to properly uh, and apply antiseptic and properly care the uh, injury thank you very much